Horizontal Canal BPBV. This video will describe when to suspect it, how to diagnose it, and how to treat it. Horizontal canal BPBV is rarer than regular BPBV, that is, posterior canal BPBV. Posterior canal BPBV is the one which is diagnosed with the Dix-Hallpike test and responds well to the Epley maneuver. Horizontal canal BPBV requires a different diagnostic test than the Dix-Hallpike test and will not be cured by the Epley maneuver. The clinical presentation of horizontal canal BPBV is very similar to posterior canal BPBV, with short episodes of vertigo initiated by head movements. They sometimes have a very strong episode of vertigo when they simply turn their head left or right while they are upright. Posterior canal BPBV usually doesn't have this. It's more brought on by lying down, bending over, or rolling over. You should suspect horizontal canal BPBV when you have a patient that sounds like they have BPBV clinically, but when you perform the Dix-Hallpike test, you don't see the characteristic vertical upward and rotatory nystagmus that is seen with posterior canal BPBV. Instead, the Dix-Hallpike test may be negative on both sides, or you may see purely horizontal nystagmus when testing one or both sides with the Dix-Hallpike test. Now, horizontal canal BPBV it's a little complicated, but you should know how to suspect it, as we just went through, and how to diagnose it, which we will cover next. Again, the Epley maneuver will not help these patients. If you have limited experience diagnosing and treating regular BPBV, that is, posterior canal BPBV, and you see someone you diagnose with horizontal canal BPBV, it is reasonable to simply refer these patients to a clinician who is familiar with the treatment of this condition such as a physiotherapist with vestibular rehab training or a vertigo-interested ENT or neurologist. If you already have in your career successfully treated a dozen or so posterior canal BPBV patients with the Epley maneuver, then you probably have seen or will soon see a patient with horizontal canal BPBV, and you might want to consider performing a Gufani maneuver on these patients to treat them. So to diagnose horizontal canal BPBV, you perform the supine roll test. This part is fairly easy to perform. You simply have the patient lie supine and then turn their head 90 degrees to the left and then to the right and observe for nystagmus. If the test is positive, you will observe purely horizontal nystagmus either beating towards the ground, which is called geotropic nystagmus, or away from the ground, which is called apogeotropic nystagmus. Unlike posterior canal BPBV, where usually only one side demonstrates nystagmus, horizontal nystagmus will be seen on testing both sides in horizontal canal BPBV. If the nystagmus beats towards the ground on testing both left and right sides, this is called geotropic horizontal canal BPBV. If the nystagmus beats away from the ground when testing both sides, this is apogeotropic horizontal canal BPBV. There is usually one side where the nystagmus is more intense than the other. To determine the affected ear, that is, which ear has the displaced autoconia in the horizontal canal, the nystagmus on the more intense side will point towards the affected ear. Let's see that now. In this lady, when her head is turned to the left side, she has purely horizontal nystagmus beating towards the ground. So this is geotropic nystagmus. When her head is turned towards the right, the nystagmus is more intense in amplitude and frequency. So the nystagmus on this more intense side is pointing towards the affected ear, which is the right ear. So she has right ear, geotropic, horizontal canal, BBBV. In this gentleman, with his head turned to the left, he has minimal nystagmus beating away from the ground. So apogeotropic nystagmus. With his right ear down, the nystagmus is clearly more intense, and the nystagmus on this more intense side is pointing towards the left ear. So the left ear is the affected ear, and he has left apogeotropic horizontal canal BPBV. If I haven't lost you so far, 
you might consider attempting to cure the patient with a Gufani maneuver. There's a Gufani maneuver for geotropic horizontal canal BPV and one for apogeotropic horizontal canal BPBV. And of course, there's a left or right ear version of both of these maneuvers. The maneuvers are performed by lying the patient on their side for one minute, then turning the patient's head 45 degrees and holding that position for two minutes and then sitting the patient up. But which side do you lie them on? And which way do you turn their head? I'll demonstrate an easy way to remember how to perform it the right way. The A and G in geotropic and apogeotropic will help you remember. In patients with geotropic horizontal canal BPBV, the G stands for lie them on their good ear and then turn their head towards the ground. So if we had a patient with right ear geotropic horizontal canal BPBV, as we saw in the elderly lady, we would perform the maneuver like this. The right ear is the affected ear, so we lie him down on his good left ear for one minute and then turn his head to the ground for two minutes and then sit him up. For apogeotropic horizontal canal BPBV, A stands for lie them on their affected ear and then turn their head away from the ground 45 degrees. So if we had a patient with left ear apogeotropic horizontal canal BPBV, as in our elderly gentleman, we would perform the maneuver like this. The left ear is the affected ear, so first we lie him on his affected left ear for one minute, then turn his head 45 degrees away from the ground, leaving him in this position for two minutes, and then sit him up. Ten minutes after the Gufani maneuver is performed, you can repeat the supine roll test. If the patient has no further vertigo or nystagmus, you can discharge the patient. Sometimes a patient with apogeotropic horizontal canal BPBV will develop geotropic horizontal canal BPBV after the Gufani maneuver. If so, simply perform the geotropic Gufani maneuver. The vast majority of patients with horizontal nystagmus during the supine roll test will simply have horizontal canal BPBV. There are rare cases of patients with horizontal positional nystagmus who turn out to have a central cause for their vertigo, but they usually have spontaneous or gaze evoked nystagmus or some other feature not typical of BPBV. These patients should be referred for follow-up.